everyone and welcome to day five of Tony Robbins Become Unshakable Challenge, the best takeaways. My name is Emily Joan Smith. If you do not know me, I am a life coach and a YouTuber. I make videos on personal growth, self-development, travel. If you love anything to do with that, please subscribe. And yeah, welcome to day five, our final day. If you have not seen the other days, make sure you check them out too after this, but I'm excited. Let's get into it. Day five of the Become Unshakable Challenge was all about integration, how we integrate what we've learned over the past five days. For the start of the training, Tony mostly went through everything we've learned within the last four days, which I was really pleased to hear because most of what he said, in fact, everything that he said bar one thing I have put into these videos that I have created for you, created for me, um, so that we can remember the information that we have been taught. The one thing I didn't put into my videos was yesterday, day four of relationships, how him and Sage, before they had met each other, they both did something similar in writing down everything they wanted within a partner. Tony took it one step further by crossing out everything that, you know, didn't really matter. He just kept the must there. Not the should, he kept the musts. And then he looked at the must of what he wanted in a relationship. And from that, he said to himself, who do I need to be in order to be worthy of this relationship? Who do I think I need to be? And that is the only thing of everything he recapped on that I think I haven't put into the videos which is incredible. Today's session was mainly about the four core actions to become successful. The four core actions of integration. The first core step is knowing where you are and knowing where you want to be. He asked us to think of a time, and I wanna ask you, think of a time that you were so sure something was impossible and you did it. You created it within your life and you are living it right now. Think of something that you thought was impossible, but you achieved it, you did it. What did you have to do to get there? He said there's really three steps that happen when people achieve things they think are impossible. The first one is they got obsessed. They were constantly thinking about it. The second one is they got clear. So many of us think we know what we want, like we wanna lose weight, but how much weight? Like. How do we actually wanna feel? Sometimes we never really get clarity on what we want. We want more money. Well, here's one pound, here's one dollar. You've got more money, are you happy? Really get clear with what you want. And the third thing he said, what people do to achieve the impossible is take massive action. Massive action is the cure rule. Number two of the core actions is crush, destroy, annihilate and replace any limiting belief, any limiting story. The only thing stopping me from getting me what I want is the story I keep telling myself. The only thing stopping you from getting what you want is a story you keep telling yourself. Beliefs can create us, but beliefs can also destroy us. Tony said a lot of what is happening at the moment is learned helplessness. Learned helplessness is not when you're just in pain, but it's when you're like, it's never gonna happen. It's never for me. I'm never going to achieve it. Those are the people that can, but it never happens for me. I'm just not one of those people. Learned helplessness comes down to one, pervasive. Believing that because your finances aren't great, your whole life, isn't great. Because I've never had a relationship, it means I never will. Because your finances are a mess, it means your whole life is a mess. Two, permanent. Thinking things are permanent. It means no matter what I do, I'm, I'm never going to achieve it. Everything I try never works. The feeling of you're screwed whether you do or you don't do something. That's when learned hopelessness comes in. And three, personal we make it personal. Tony Robbins gave us some time to think about some questions. And I wanna ask you them too. 
What is a belief that has gotten in the way? What is a limiting belief that has to go? What has that limiting belief cost you? Because you believe that thing, have you not had the loving relationship that you want, the passion? Have you not created the lifestyle that you want? Have you felt hopelessness because of that belief? Because of that belief, are you not achieving what you know somewhere deep down inside of you is possible? Why is that belief bullshit? Think back through your life or examples of other people, why that limiting belief is a lie, why it's bullshit. And what is the opposite of that bullshit belief? The third core action is watch your language. Now, within this segment, Tony tells one of my favorite stories about a time in his life, in his business, where he was working with two other people, how they were in business together and they had got into business with another company and that other company basically was screwing them over. And I want you to imagine three people. You've got Tony in the middle and then you've got one of his friends who is very successful and another of his friends who is successful and very, very passionate. Now, what was happening to them was really, really wrong. And Tony was really pissed off. Like really pissed off about this situation. You know, he was really angry. He was mad as hell what that other company was doing to them. Now, his friend, his successful, passionate friend was enraged. He was furious. He was like, I'm gonna kill them. Like they're, they're destroying our business. They're destroying our baby. And his other friend who was successful, he was a bit peeved. Tony said, well, don't you get it? I'm so annoyed. Aren't you annoyed? He was like, yeah, well, I'm a little bit tinkled. Tony was like, tinkled, tinkled. And he couldn't like get over how silly the word was. And in that moment, Tony realized something really important. He, he recognized a pattern and he asked his successful friend, have you ever really been upset? And he reminded him of a time, his friend of a time that he knew that was stressful to his friend. And he was like, well, yeah, I was, I was peeved then. But yeah, no, I'm never really upset. And Tony realized the words that we attach to our experiences become our experiences. His passionate, successful friend was always gonna be furious, was always gonna be enraged, was always gonna be very, very angry because of the words he used. Whereas his other friend, those words didn't install those feelings within him. The fourth thing is taking massive action. Never leave a space without taking massive action, without scheduling in that call or scheduling in that next appointment or ringing that person, always take the massive action. The key to massive action is you have to do it while you're in state. Tony said, never leave the sight of a goal without some form of action towards its attainment. The fifth and the final core action is giving way more than you expect to receive. Tony realized in one of the lowest moments of his life that the secret to living is giving. Tony Robbins brought to the stage one of his dear friends, Dean Graziosi. Dean Graziosi spoke a lot about closing the gap and his simple tool that he uses at least four times a year. First step of the tool is to figure out where you are. He said the thing with this is to be really real with yourself. The second part is knowing where you want to be. He said so many people know what they don't want, but they don't know what they do want. And then if you've got those two things in between of where you are and where you want to be is the gap. Dean explained that one of the biggest moments in his life is when he really figured out his why. And to do this, he used the tool of seven whys. Not just asking yourself why you want to have something, but asking yourself it seven times. So for example, I want to be able to be a paid YouTuber. Why? Because I want to be able to be paid to do the things that I love. Why? Because I only really feel passion when it comes to work, when I'm doing what I love. Why? Because I've seen in my life, in a lot of my life, um, my family, my parents um, not enjoy what they do for work. Why? Well, actually, why is when I was younger, my dad passed away and I remember him hardly ever being in my life. So why? Why, why do you want to do this? Why is that important to know that? Because I want to know that if I ever have children, I know that my time is short and I want to be in their lives as much as possible. So I want to be paid by YouTube because it's a, it's, it's a way that 
I can work on my own terms and do what I love. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> um, but that's how you do it. You ask yourself why seven times. And by the seventh time, you've really got into your why. Dean said, so you know where you are, you know where you want to be, and you know why. Now, mostly, normally people go to how. So how are you gonna do it? He said, don't go to how. Look for who. Who has done what you want to do? Who can you learn from? Because as we know, most people, most successful people have written books or written courses and literally 20 years of their life or 50 years of their lives, they've compressed down to all the things that they've learned. And you can learn those things. And it doesn't have to take you 50 years to learn them. It just has to take you four hours or four days or whatever, how long the course is, or four minutes as you watch a video on how to do something. Don't look for how, look for who. Thank you so much for watching. If you've watched any of my videos over the last five days, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Please subscribe. And it would mean a lot if you watch any of my other videos on this channel, as I'm really, really hoping to get that goal to be able to be in partnership with YouTube so I can get paid for making videos. That's my goal for this year. And yeah, I hope to take you along with me.